Hello, hello, and welcome to the Friday tutorial. Um, I apologize, today I did not have the trace around effect like I know one of you guys requested. Um, I searched all last night and part of today trying to find the effect online, see if um, anyone else has ever done it, and really no one, no one else has done it. Um, and I tried many methods by myself and I couldn't quite find one to work properly. Um, so I apologize, but I will be working with one of my other friends um, in the near future, and hopefully uh, him and I will be able to create a sort of trace around effect. So don't give up on me yet. But um, today instead I am showing you a kind of off camera explosion and uh, it looks like this. Oh. Uh, you might have remember that from my Man vs. Mild video. If you didn't see that, click that little annotation right there. Uh, but so on that note, Let's jump into the video. Alright, so here we are in Final Cut Express, not Pro, although this effect will just work just fine in Pro. Um, first off, um, here's the original shot. How about I just show you that to start off? Out of the chopper, and it's turning my. Oh! Now, as you can see, that's pretty simple. We just had the cameraman shake the camera a little bit, and uh, I should also point out that this effect will not will work better. Um, will work just as well as for a helicopter exploding as a car or whatever. In case you guys were wondering that, um, so the first step into creating this effect is you want to find the point where the actual explosion happens, so that you can cut that clip in half. Um, here, I have the clip in the timeline, so I'll just play this and I'll see where I should stop. Very much. How about like right about there, so you kind of get a little bit of the audio in there. So, uh, bring up your blade tool by pressing B, and cut the uh, clip right there where you want it to um to where you want the explosion to happen. Let's just say that. So let's double click on that, load up into the viewer, come up here to effects, video filters, and color correction and color corrector. Um, the whole entire effect is done with color corrector. There's no other added plugins and stuff like that. So once we uh, select that and we got the color corrector on, we can come up here to color corrector and see where it says the balance tab or the balance little bar thingy. Let's try to bring this as far up into the red as we can um, just by kind of dragging it and flicking it with the mouse. Um, most of the time color correction isn't used for this kind of thing so I, um, you might have to fiddle with the little button there to get it to where you want to go. So over here in the canvas, it looks pretty good. Um, if you want a little bit of a fine adjustment, you can change it in the hue a little bit. I'm going to just change it over here to a little bit of a purple so you get more, or not purple, but you know, reddish. So that looks pretty good. Um, black, whites, and mids and stuff. I think that's pretty good. I mean, I'm not like an expert, but yeah, pretty much it's an explosion. It's kind of insane, so... <laughs> You can bring up the saturation if you want a little bit. Um, I recommend not doing too much with that. So after we do that, um, sadly there is no keyframe feature, at least in my version of Final Cut, um, in the little um, color corrector tab. So we'll have to come over here to filters, and where it says color corrector, or color corrector, um, hit this little fold down menu, and you should see a um, a little sub menu called magnitude. And what we want to do is we want to put that uh, the playhead at the very first frame and hit the keyframe button on magnitude. Um, after this, let's bring it forward a few frames um, to where you want the, like, the more peak of the explosion to happen. So about right there looks good. And then um, I'll drag this um, the playhead and the timelines to where a point where I want the uh, um, explosion to stop, where kind of the helicopter dies down and falls. So probably about right there, like the actor is getting up out of his tree and the cameraman stopped shaking around the camera and all, so let's hit the keyframe button one more time. And now we can bring that magnitude down to zero, as well as come over here to the first frame where the uh, original keyframe was, and you can tell if it's a keyframe by the keyframe button being lit up, and bring that magnitude down to zero. So now if we watch it, we can see... Um, it's pretty intense. I think that I can probably draw out the uh, magnitude to a little bit further of a length. 
So let's save that right there. Alright, that's pretty good. And I'm going to bring up the uh, magnitude on the second keyframe to a higher percentage to say about 160-ish. That might be a little bit too high for my personal preferences, but you know, it's all about what you guys want. Um, so that looks pretty good for the um, color correction. Um, select the original or select the clip again and come up here to effects video filters, um, stylize, and bad TV. And this is going to kind of create the uh, bad TV effect. Um, here I'll play the original clip so you guys can see. Um, right, about, right about here we can see um, kind of the uh, the screen splits in two. We can kind of see a little bit of bars around there and whatnot. Um, this is pretty much will create that. So let's come over here back to um, the clip that we're editing. And so what we want to do first is we want to make sure that this is going to be the very peak of the um, of the explosion, where we want the very peak of all the craziness with the screen. Um, just like with a color corrector, we want that to be like the very peak of the explosion. So we can close up the color correction tab, and here we have the bad TV effect. Um, I want to bring down the roll to about negative 80. I kind of find that works good for me, maybe about negative 70, just so that we can see mostly what's going on in this one and um, just kind of see the effect that it's a bad TV um, but we can still tell what's going on static let's bring up the static a little bit um, again this is all totally what you guys want uh, color cinch I'll bring that down kind of give it a little bit of a crazy feel um, saturate let's bring that up to 0.8 or 8 maybe ah eh, that looks way too much I'll bring down negative 8 Ah, uh, whatever. It works for me. Um, line thickness. I want to bring this up. I know. Um, and the line distance. So maybe about right there. Um, that looks a little too much, but hey, it works. Um, so now down here in this little lovely menu, let's bring the playhead to the uh, very first frame of the clip. And we can tell it's the first frame because of this little doohickey we have down here in this corner so that's the first clip because it's on the left hand side so um, select it make sure it's selected come up here to filters and um, where it says mix let's hit that keyframe button um, the mix is pretty much the amount of the o of the uh, overall um, effect and this can all be done in just about every other um, every other preset for an effect um, as well as any third parties I believe so let's move forward a few frames to um, again the peak of the explosion. Maybe a little bit earlier, just kind of uh, show a little bit of a uh, like a, an aftermath, except very briefly, kind of a shockwave. A shockwave. That's what I'm thinking of. Kind of think of the word there. <laughs> so from zero to a hundred, really quickly. Move forward a few more frames, and one hundred to zero, really quickly. I'm going to render this and I will see you guys once it's done rendering. Alright, lovely. It is now done rendering and let's watch it. Uh, for the most part that looks pretty good, but we're missing one big thing, which is the sound effect. Um, now if you just type in online explosion sound effect, they are everywhere. I can guarantee you that. Um, but I just happen to have one here right on my desktop, so I'll grab this. Bring it back in here, and let's put it pretty close to the very front. Not the very front, but a couple frames into it. So let's play this now. Ah, eh, still a little bit um, late, so let's bring this backwards more. Clearly that was much too loud, but it worked pretty good. I think that's a really neat effect. Um, now there's many things you can um, do instead. Let's say you're working on a tripod. Um, there's also always the uh, option of doing a um, distort and um, earthquake filter. That will give you a lot of parameters to work with kind of a shaky footage. And I will work on that on Monday's tutorial. And on that note, I wish you guys all farewell. Check the links in the sidebar for the Facebook and the Twitter accounts of us. And I will see you guys on Monday. I hope.